For more on what's really prompting this wave of terror attacks, I spoke to David Garderstein Ross. He's a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, which conducts research on global terrorism. So these are, these are new targets, and uh, the pace of attacks is, is enormous. Uh, part of it is that jihadism in general is just it's a growth movement. Uh, it has grown exponentially since 2011, uh, not just the Islamic State uh, in uh, Iraq and Syria, but also new affiliates that are cropping up throughout the world, uh, new al-Qaeda affiliates, and you have a lot more activity now than you did you know, three, five, ten years ago. But why is that? Why are we seeing such increased activity? Is it just sir, hatred towards the West, fighting the Americans? I mean, what, what is it? Ultimately, I'd say the factors that have really changed things are, number one, you had um, a, a changing political system in uh, the North Africa and the Middle East, which uh, had an impact in terms of greater openness for people to preach new ideas, like jihadist ideas. And then you had countries that never got put back together again, Libya and Syria, which have had this effect in terms of boiling over and creating constant risk for their neighbors. That's another factor. Um, I mean, there, there are multiple things at play. Then you have the, the budding Sunni-Shia conflict with Saudi Arabia on one side, uh, Iran on the other side, and a lot of things revolve around that conflict. And how concerned are you about um, lone gunmen, people who go to places like Libya for training, they come back to Tunisia, they launch horrific attacks. Is there a way to stop these people and prevent attacks like these in the future? There's no permanent way to prevent lone gunmen. One thing that, that ISIS is very good at is inspiring what they call the lone wolf terrorist, a lone individual who physically isn't connected to a network but decides to carry out an attack. Terrorism has tended to be a group activity, and the reason for that is to get someone to carry out something extreme like an act of terrorist violence generally takes a group that will reinforce a person's extremism and spur them on to action and not allow them to back out. And social media increasingly is playing the role of that group that can spur someone on and not allow him to back out. So is this our new reality, this kind of world that we're living in, crisis after crisis, attacks after attacks? Violent non-state actors growing. That's the new world that we're living in. Violent non-state actors are much more powerful from one country to another. The state is in decline, the Westphalian state. Now, that's not true in the United States, not true in Canada, uh, not true in most European countries, although uh, in Greece the state itself may be melting down. But if you look at, at countries with less powerful state apparatus, um, even Tunisia, which is a relatively small country and has been relatively stable, uh, it had been increasingly, even prior to this attack, losing control uh, of its western border, losing control of the south of the country, where uh, traffickers and jihadist groups and others were becoming more powerful forces. And you know, moving forward, we're going to see violent non-state actors, you know, non-state groups that try to impose their will. So we know what strategy doesn't work, David. Give me a strategy that will work in fighting terror. Unfortunately, when it comes to combating the problem of terrorism and jihadist organizations, there's not some sort of silver bullet that's going to massively change the game. But I think that we can forge a better paradigm. And I think that, that the better paradigm is engagement at a sub-state level, preventive action, and taking a minimalist approach to change, except when you actually can swing things in a positive direction.